there's no secret recipe for being a good teacher. At the same time, I don't think you need to do anything really high tech to make it work. I think that if you're, you're up there, you clearly love what you're doing. You are enthusiastic about what you're doing. I think that's going to rub off on students. I am Ian Vandenberg. I'm a lecturer in the Office of the Dean of Mathematics, and I'm the director of the Center for Education in Mathematics and Computing. I'm not a researcher, but my, uh, my area of specialty, I guess, is, is helping in the outreach that the University of Waterloo does to high schools and elementary schools around the country and around the world. My mother's a teacher. All four of my grandparents were teachers. So I have teaching in my blood. I think it was probably natural I was going to get there somehow. I try to be as dynamic as I can at the front of the room, which I think helps. From my, my music background, I suppose I'm a bit of a performer to a certain extent, and that helps when you get up in front of a large class. So you have to educate them, you have to entertain them a little bit too. I started with one bigger circle and a smaller circle inside it that passes through the center of the bigger circle and just touches the outer circle over here. And so I, we have a diameter and we started off with the radius of the smaller circle being 5 and then I was trying to find the length of, of this distance here, of this line segment BC. And this My wife is an elementary school teacher, so we talk a lot about this sort of thing and I think being, I think you can be a good teacher with just chalk and a blackboard. Use the Pythagorean theorem and use some similar triangles a couple of times and it all worked out pretty nicely. I spend a lot of time, I think, actually away from the blackboard. I'll write, I'll go through something with the students, I will write whatever it is we need to write on the board, and then I'll often step away from the board. Often, often a lot of our lecture halls have a little step at the front, so I'll step down onto the same level as they are, walk around to one of the sides or the other side, talk to them a little bit about what this means and why, why this is important in the context of what we're doing or in a larger context and then move on. I think sometimes we, probably in math, more than other areas, we make the mistake of trying to go too fast, of trying to skip steps that students might not get, of trying to, of assuming they get it when they don't get it, of trying to get through too much material. And I think pacing is also a really important part of teaching, of trying to, trying to figure out where that all fits together. You need to try to be approachable, and you try to. I try to learn as many students' names as I can. In a class of 200, I'll, I'll get two thirds of them often, um, and that requires some some work. But I think it's really worth it. We get good uh, good class lists and good photo class lists actually, so it's a little easier to try to match students to names. But I think I think it helps. It makes the students feel a lot more connected to you. It makes me feel more connected to them. I try to have an open door policy. Whenever students want to come and see me, they are more than welcome to. Just watching the students, reading their body language. Are they giving you the blank, I have no clue what you're doing look? Are they finished copying down what you've just written down? Are they reading the latest copy of Math News? <laughs> so I think just paying attention to all of that and being observant to what's going on. You can really read a lot out of that body language. I think trying to trying to connect the mathematics we do in whatever class I'm teaching to to the real world a bit. A lot of what we do in the real world has has geometry as its base. Certainly, when you design a bridge or when you uh, design an airplane or do anything like that, geometry is really important. Because geometry is just shape. So the shape that you build something relates to the physics of the object and the mathematics behind it connects it all together. Which can be hard to do. Try to connect it also to other courses they may be taking. But also I think, I think just showing my passion for mathematics and my passion for teaching, I think those are the things that really inspire students. We're really lucky here in the math faculty that we have students who come here because they really like math. So trying to connect with them on the level of really liking math shouldn't really be that difficult to do.